Welcome to my MailChimp tutorial where I'm going to be showing you how to use MailChimp for beginners. I'm not big on introductions, so let's get started right away. First thing is going to be your audience name that when you get started, you originally create it. I just want to show you how to, you can edit it in case you need to do that. So on the left side under audience, I am under all contacts. And as you can see here, what you want to do is click on settings and you can go to audience name and defaults. All right, so this is gonna be the audience name. Make sure it's probably something around your name, your brand, just so you know. If you're not gonna be creating other audiences, then obviously it's not gonna be a big deal, but just make it something that you are familiar with. If you wanna enable double opt-in, you can. However, I don't like that specifically because a lot of people aren't gonna go in and confirm that, okay? So default from name, I'm gonna keep Marketing Island. We have our from email address and a few other things, not too much else going on here in case you wanna enable subscription notifications, but after you are done with this, simply click on save audience and campaign defaults. All right, great, now that that is saved, now what we can do next is add contacts in case you are moving to MailChimp from somewhere else, very easy to do. Let's go to add contacts right here, and we could do add a single subscriber or import contacts. This is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just gonna go with import contacts because it's a little bit more. So you can import from another service, upload a CSV file or copy and paste. I'm just gonna go with the CSV file to show you here. Let's go to continue. And what I'm gonna do is browse and upload mine. Okay, emails.csv. I just have my one email in there and then I'm gonna do continue to organize. Okay, and that's why we have our audience and made sure that is going to be correct. So I'm gonna update any existing contacts. So if there's any information that could be updated, we'll do that and we can do continue to tag. Now this is if you wanna tag any of your subscribers, for example, if this is just a subscriber list and there's no customers, you might not even need to do that. However, if this is a customer list, you might wanna do that where you could just click on customer right here and then do continue to match, but I'm gonna keep it blank if it's just say a list of subscribers, continue to match. And as you can see, what I had is email address under it and then we have just the simple email. So we're matching the column labels to contact information, email address, email address looks good. And let's click on continue to subscribe. All right, and so it says, when you choose the subscribe status for your contacts, it indicates that you've gained permission to market to them. Obviously that's very important. There are a few other options here, but subscribe is gonna be good, assuming they have consent and finalize import. Okay, and looks good, let's complete import. All right, great. And what I can do is just view contacts if needed, just to showcase where they would be. All right, and perfect. There is the email that I added in. Of course, if you want to add any of those extra tags, you can do that. Let me just show you very quickly. All right, so here's the CSV file that I used. Notice it's just email and then all the emails would go under it. And then you could do first name if you wanted to. That would be first name. This could be last name and then all the last names would go down. And that's how you can match it up in case you wanted to use some of those other placeholders like you know first name, last name, and so on and so forth. All right, back to the tutorial. All right, so we have our audience name, we imported our subscribers, and this is just my one, obviously for privacy reasons. I don't wanna go uploading a lot of other emails so that you can see, not cool, right? So next what we wanna do is create a landing page so we can create a sign up form. So if we go to the pencil at the top left and click on create, we have a landing page right here. So let's do build landing page. This is another way of creating a sign up form as well. So if people wanna sign up to your newsletter, they can do that this way. Let's do build landing page. All right, so I gave the landing page name of a newsletter where people can sign up to join our newsletter. The audience, once again, this is the reason why we did this first so that we know who our audience is gonna be and what they're gonna be getting. This is the only one we have, unless you have more, make sure you choose the appropriate one and click on begin. All right, and there's some templates that we can choose from. This one's nice with lead generation. In all honesty, I love the ones that are very simple. Uh, there's more lead generation here. And this one is great, grow your list. There's not a whole lot going on. And these are the ones that usually convert the best in my experience. I'm gonna go with this. So I'm gonna click on grow your list. All right, and I already have my logo there, which is nice. In case you wanted to edit that, you can click on it. And as you can see here, we have our image. We can click on replace. And that's simply how you can do that. I'm just gonna show you there. This is where you can upload your own photos, which would be your logo, add it in, click on it, and that's where you can edit it and change it around. So a big enticing headline goes here. Let's click on this once. Let's click on it again, double click. This is gonna be our headline. And once again, I'm gonna go here, double click, and now we can edit this as well. Give me one moment, and I'm just gonna add a little text. All right, so I put enter your best email below to receive updates about our newest software tutorials, reviews, and demos, along with some exclusive deals and discounts. Okay, so now if we click on this section right here, for this, I just want email address. You can add others if needed, and you can have them be required. In my many years of experience, I have always noticed that 
the least amount of fields that you have, the higher the conversions you're gonna be. For example, if you came to this page and all you needed to do was add your email address, it's pretty simple. When we start adding our first name, our last name, our address, our phone number, our birthday, our pet goldfish's name, when we were born, our street, like that's a lot of stuff to enter and that's very intimidating. So pretty much the point is here, the least amount of fields that you have, the higher the conversions you're gonna be. This is gonna be, say, beneficial maybe if you need their address for some reason, or maybe you're doing a webinar and you want their first name in the future, something like that, but, but overall, email address is gonna be great here. We have our subscribe button as well. As you can see, we have subscribe. We can do we can do click here to subscribe, so it's more of a call to action. It says, after form is submitted, send visitors to. We can just do a confirmation message, and it's gonna say something like, success, you've been added to the audience. That's what the success is going to be. You can change that around if needed, but I think that looks just fine. Let's do save and close. And if there's anything else that you wanted to add in here, it's as simple as dragging and dropping it. So we can drag and drop it right there but I don't specifically need that. I'm just you know, showing you how it's done. Let's do delete. And anything else can be drag and drop in there. Pretty simple stuff, right? So I'm just gonna go with save and close. All right, so it's just gonna be showcasing the URL in case we wanted to change that, we can do that. Pretty self-explanatory. Audience, once again, they're gonna be added to Marketing Island. Once again, the big reason why we did that in the beginning and just some other tracking and things in case you need to utilize that. Last but not least here, what we wanna do is click on publish. All right, perfect. And what we can do, I'm just gonna open this up in a new tab and we can check it out. All right, so we have our landing page. Obviously we have our logo joining the newsletter. This is just a random email that doesn't exist. I'm just gonna do click here to subscribe so you can see what it looks like. There we go, success, you've been added to the audience. Pretty simple stuff, right? So we've gone in, we've created our audience name, added some contacts, created a newsletter page or a landing page where we can capture subscribers. Now I'm gonna show you how to send out a newsletter to your audience that you've created and captured. So when we were back at the dashboard of MailChimp, what we wanna do is go to the pencil on the left and click on create. And from here, we can go to regular email. Let's click on design email. All right, so here's gonna be the recipients that are gonna be seeing it. Obviously, if we wanted to edit that, we can, but if you're just getting started with your account, you probably just have your made audience and that's gonna be fine. This is gonna be our from. Of course, we can edit that. If you wanted to use your real name, you can change that in the audience settings. Of course, you have your email as well. We have our subject line, which we can say, let's talk about, let's add this in. All right, so what I did is add a subject line. So I did how to create Pixar videos. And the preview text, which is gonna be a little bit extra as it says, appears in the inbox after the subject line. I like calling this like a little bit more. So you have a nice subject line. This is gonna add a little bit more to maybe entice them, maybe an extra benefit, maybe something like you're gonna love this one, just wait until you see this. I reviewed this, you're gonna love it, whatever else. Just a little bit extra to help them maybe get the click. And you're gonna notice after you create a subject line, there's some best practices here. So it's short and sweet. Subject lines with fewer than nine words tend to perform better. Emojis are great in small quantities. I do have the little rocket there, staying under 60 characters, and you got your point across without using too many punctuation marks. So looks good, let's click on save. And last but not least, let's move to the content. This is gonna be where we actually create the email. So let's click on design email. And now there's gonna be plenty of email templates that you can use. It's really dependent upon you and the type of email that you wanna send. Me personally, I love using blank emails. I think that the less pictures, the better. It's gonna help you uh, stay out of the spam box, AKA the sin bin, which is what I like to call it. So I'm just gonna go with start from scratch. And the good thing about creating a newsletter, it's pretty much very similar to creating a landing page with their drag and drop editor. So you don't really have to learn anything different. It's more about adding your email and then editing it from there, which I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm gonna go with start from scratch. All right, and once again, my logo is already up there, which we know how to change. And here's the cool thing, we can drag and drop just simply the text that we need to add. We could add headers, buttons, even videos. So I'm gonna go and add a paragraph right here. What I'm gonna do is paste in an email that I got from ChatGPT. All right, so I pasted it in. You might notice that it's gonna be centered and maybe we wanna move that to the left, which is completely fine. I like highlighting it and what I can do is just simply click on the left aligned right there. You're also gonna notice how there's no spacing or paragraphs, which is something I like to change around. So what I'm gonna do is make the sentences shorter and choppier. Uh, something that I like doing, me personally, I think it becomes so much easier to read. That's gonna be a link, which I'll show you how to add in. Okay, and let me just continue doing this. Okay, so if you'll notice, it's so much easier to read when everything is kinda spaced evenly and it doesn't read like a college essay. So. Since this is an email, we're gonna to wanna to add some links, right? So for example, let's say I was just sending to my review for this product. We're gonna highlight the text that we need. We're gonna go right here. And I'm just gonna add in a YouTube link. 
Okay, it's not the exact link for it, just showcasing what it would look like if we did that. Let's click on save. And you're gonna notice it's now black and underlined. And this is something I talk about a lot of my videos is that we wanna at least make this blue and we can easily do that, right? So here's the text highlight and then we have the text color. Let's click on text color and we wanna make it blue. There we go. So now if you look at it, this definitely looks like a link. It's clickable. Anytime someone sees a text with a blue and blue underline, you're like, it's a link. So you're gonna probably get many more clicks if you do that in my opinion. So same thing here. What I can do is add at least a call to action. Click to watch the magic unfold. Let's do the same thing here. Let's make this a link. Let's save it. And of course, let's change around the uh, text color. Oops. And we have blue. Perfect. So that's what our email is going to look like. You'll notice we have this right here as well. We can click on this and we can delete it. Now, if we wanted to add anything else, there's going to be some dividers and spacers, which look pretty cool. There's also like the thickness. You can do solid. You can do dashed. A lot of this is more of the aesthetic things. Maybe you want to just add a video as well. We can add a video down here. And just to kind of show you, I'm going to get the YouTube video for my review for this specific product just to showcase what it looks like. All right, so what I did is get the YouTube link and I'm just gonna paste it in right here. And give it a second and just like that, that's gonna be the video. Of course, you can always replace right here if you wanna upload your own image. We can center it here in case you wanna add a description. We have padding. And here's something else that's cool in case you wanna just add a button to the actual product. What we can do is take a button, we can go right down below and say this goes to the product URL. I don't know what it is off the top of my head perfectly. I'm just using that as an example. Let me do HTTPS forward slash www dot. Okay, we're going to be centered. And of course, we have our border. We have colors. But what we want to do is edit it. So if we click on it right here, let's move our text there. Let's delete this. Spelled that wrong. And of course, maybe we don't like the color of it. That's the border. This is the colors right here. So we can change that. Let's make it maybe green. Does that pop a little bit more? I think that looks pretty good, right? Something like that. And once again, if we wanted to just, we can click here and we can duplicate this and we can drag and drop it right down below in case you wanted to add anything below that. So that's just an example of how you can go about creating your newsletters. It is pretty straightforward. Like I said, pretty simple to creating a landing page, except like a lot of the things are gonna be on the left side. And it's mostly about dragging and dropping and just adding whatever it is that you want. You can send a test, you can even preview. I'm gonna click on the preview button right here. All right, so here's the desktop view. Looks very similar to how we had it before, plus we have our subject line and so on and so forth. And of course, mobile. If you scroll down, it's gonna be a little bit tighter, obviously, because we're on a mobile screen. And inbox is gonna be if you have an upgraded account where you can get a little bit better look at it inside a specific inbox. But let's go back there. Last but not least, what we can do, if we want, you can save as a template. So this is gonna be a little time-saving thing if you wanna utilize a lot of the same newsletters over and over. What you can do if you wanted to save this one, let me undo this. Let's just say I want to use this exact template over and over. What I can do is save it as a template and then all I would need to do is change around the email and the links, then of course the video and the link here. So it's kind of creating that template for you so you don't have to go in and edit too many things. Overall, that can make your life a whole lot easier. Nevertheless, I'm just gonna click on save and exit and that's just a tip for you in case you wanna use it. All right, and that is gonna be everything that we have gone through there. So we have our recipients, we have our from, we have our subject, we're gonna be sending now. They're gonna be adding a referral badge just because it's not on the free trial, depending on when you are. Obviously, you can change that by upgrading. And last but not least is going to be clicking on the send button. And you, my friend, have completed this MailChimp tutorial where you now know how to use it even as a beginner. So I hope this tutorial really helped you out, kind of going over from where we started. We edited our audience name, we imported some contacts or added some contacts from from then on out, we created a landing page where people can subscribe to our newsletter. And then from there, I showed you how to create a newsletter from scratch so that you can send it out to the contacts that you've not only imported, but are also collecting using your MailChimp landing page. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up as it helps me out a lot as well. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching this MailChimp tutorial, and I'll see you in my next video.